I present to you the largest steam locomotive in the world known as the Big Boy. This is Union Pacific's number 4012 and it's located right here at Steamtown National Historic Site. If you'd like to learn more about it, come along with me. Welcome back guys and welcome to Union Pacific number 4012. If you wish to pause this, you're welcome to read it. I'm going to be sharing a lot of information with you in the video and on screen of this one-of-a-kind locomotive. So as we make our way around, I'm going to point out a few things and share a few stats about number 4012. As always, and this is especially true in this video, camera does not do it justice. This thing is a monster. You can see people standing there, and I'm going to show a couple comparisons myself. This is unlike anything you could ever see in person as far as trains go. Now this is one of 25 ever built. There's only 25 big boys constructed. And this is one of the few survivors. It was built in 1941, operated for 21 years, retired in 1962. And it hauled freight between Cheyenne, Wyoming and Ogden, Utah. Made its way to Steamtown to their collection, I think in Bellow Falls, Vermont, back in the 80s. Officially made it to Scranton area in the 90s. And if I'm not mistaken, this used to be sitting near the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel, which is about a half mile down the road used to be sitting in front of there and was eventually brought here to Steamtown National Historic Site. Now just to give you a sense of scale, I mean, I'm walking along the connecting rods here, the push rods. They are much taller than me. The whole frame itself is just incredible how big it is. And the wheels are taller than me, without a doubt, some of the largest train wheels ever. Take a look at some of the details here. You can see a type of gauge here. It's like a glass gauge and there's numbers. And you can see a chain right here too. There's a scale with some cars going by, how big this really is. Now I'm gonna show you where this locomotive used to sit on the property here because this is not its original location and it actually was just recently brought back out. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a couple moments. Just, <laughs> it's like incredible. I mean, you know, I got average to large size hands, like bear paws and you know just for a comparison how big these pieces are I'd imagine one of these wheels alone probably weighs more than an automobile or close to an automobile's weight now several years ago this was open to the public for cab tours during rail fest and I actually had the opportunity to get up inside the cab. So if you haven't seen that video, it will be linked down below. It was back around 2013 or so, I think it was at Rail Fest, but they did have open public tours. So you could get up inside the cab and check it out for yourself to see how big it is. Cause it's, it's incredible. All the gauges and dials and levers and the amount of room too. I mean, it's pretty spacious for a locomotive cab. Hopefully they bring those back in the future for a future Rail Fest because this is their prized possession here at Steamtown. As we make our way to the rear of the train, we are now looking at the tender, which does hold the coal and water. And the tender itself has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 wheels just for the tender. And you can see all the leaf springs there.
Here's a shot of the rear of the tender, UP4012. The vehicle approaching again for a size comparison. And this holds 24,000 gallons of water. Now, if you look straight across, you see Reading number 2124 sitting over there with the yellow pinstriping. That is where the big boy used to reside. It sat there for many years when it arrived here at Steamtown. And when it sat there, as far as my memory serves correct, it did undergo a paint restoration. I think they painted it on location there at the spot, covered it in tarps, painted it, but it didn't last for very long. It started peeling and chipping. It started looking worse than it did. But there's a reason it looks shiny and brand new right now. That is because back in October of 2019, it was removed from that location and was brought back into the locomotive shops to undergo a full cosmetic restoration. And it re-debuted May of 2021. I was here just a day or two after it debuted to snap some photos and I was speechless with how it looked. And even as of today, it still looks just as pristine. It looks like a brand new locomotive, like it just rolled out of the shops. They did such a phenomenal job. Now there are reports that this is in such good condition that it could be restored to operating condition to run on the rails. But there's a reason they haven't gone forth with that and kept it as a static restoration piece, static display. That's because it's simply much too heavy, much too large for the area here in Pennsylvania on the East Coast. The tunnels, culverts, bridges, radiuses can't handle this. This thing is just much too large and it just wouldn't be feasible to put all the money into it, get it up to running condition, just for it not to be able to go anywhere. Now, with that said, if you do want to see a big boy in operation, there is a sister engine, number 4014, that is in operation as of today. Union Pacific restored it to operating condition, I think two years ago. I haven't seen it in person yet, but I have seen countless videos because it's such an amazing piece to watch. So if you want to see what one of these look like operating on the rails today, modern time 2021, just go to YouTube where you already are and search Union Pacific 4014 and there'll be hundreds of videos of people documenting it. People never thought we'd ever see one of these operating again in person or in modern times and Union Pacific made it happen. So my goal, my bucket list item is to see 4014 operating in person one day. Now, if you heard me talk about locomotives in the past, about wheel configurations, wheel sets, they go by the number of wheels as the size of the locomotive to classify it as. So this is a 4884 wheel set, wheel configuration. That means there's four lead truck wheels, two on each side, eight drive wheels, four and four, another eight, four and four, and then eight rear truck wheels so that's a lot of wheels for a train rightfully so to hold all the weight to distribute the power and the length of it i mean it's mind-blowing i can't describe it anymore if you ever come to steamtown or get a chance to see a big boy in person do it you won't regret it it is just simply amazing one of the most incredible feats of engineering ever built and steam locomotives alone are powerful. You can just imagine what this thing could do. If I'm not mistaken, it can or is able, able, capable of reaching speeds of close to 100 miles per hour, if I'm not mistaken. And it could pull, I don't know the length of hand, but an excessive amount of rail cars. The one incredible thing that Steamtown did is when they brought it out to this location, they brought it out through the locomotive shop over the turntable through the entryway and onto this particular rail to display it for one particular reason. I'm gonna show it to you right now. And that is how it's able to sit offset. The articulation on this thing is mind blowing. Steamtown actually documented it on their Facebook page, I believe, showing this getting pushed out to this location. And when it came through the areas up by the building, it had to snake its way through, which means Parts of the engine, the locomotive, were overhanging several feet just to make the curve. And it's a very gentle, you know, very mild curve. 
and the articulation of this thing was pushing it off so far. It was incredible to watch, and they documented it, and it's on their Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. But they do have it sitting here on the track around a curve. And if you look at it, the front coupler here is almost dead center. But if you look up at the uh, bell in the uh, smokestack area, it is off to the side. And that is the articulation. And then again, this is a very gentle sweeping curve and it's already showing how big it is just for this little tiny curve. So I'm gonna walk up to here just for another size comparison and just to show you. Now I am 5'11". This thing makes me feel like a, a an ant with how big it is. It's almost daunting. And even though it's sitting here is a static piece, it still has like a vibe, a feel to it. It's just so monstrous, so powerful. And it's almost like just waiting to come back to life. And fortunately this one won't happen, but again, one could wish. Now in case you're wondering how big these wheels really are compared to me, as I showed you at the front of the train, I am 5'11". I'm gonna walk up to it and just show you how monstrous they are. They are, I'd say probably six foot in diameter. Very, very large wheels. Something else I like to point out too is the number and size of the rivets. All right there for the boiler. And speaking of the boiler, since this is so large, has such a large capacity and needs so much fuel to run, this actually has an auger to feed the firebox. So right in there, you can see that kind of like impeller and that would feed coal from the tender right into the firebox. So the fireman would still essentially be needed, but he would have to control the, you know, input of the coal into the firebox to have the proper amount. And even the tender alone has hundreds, if not thousands of rivets. It's still mind blowing. You know, when you sit there and really think about all the work that went into constructing this and to make it as impressive and reliable as it was. But then they come to realize they made it too big for more recent times. It's just, it just kind of, you wrap your mind around it. It just makes you really come to appreciate how much work and thought and dedication went into building these. And only 25 of them were built and <laughs> that's understandable. You can imagine the amount of manpower, labor, parts, materials needed to build 25 of these. So that was my look here at Union Pacific's number 4012, the big boy, here at Steamtown National Historic Site, or as I like to refer to it as the world's largest steam locomotive. If you ever get the opportunity to see 4012 or 4014 in person, don't pass up the opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime experience. It's something that you'll never forget especially if you have young kids or grandkids. Most kids love trains, and this is the prized, biggest, best one of all. That's something that don't ever forget, and that I enjoy coming to see time and time again. And although I shared it in previous videos, it's my first time ever doing a full video specifically on this piece, and I figured the wait's been long enough. Let's do it. So any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you'd like to see more videos here from Steamtown, you'll find a playlist in the description. And like I always say, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.